good afternoon, ENMU community. Welcome to the Years of Service Recognition and the Spirit of Eastern Awards Ceremony. It is a privilege to recognize some of Eastern's best employees, best faculty, and best friends. Our first group to be recognized today are Years of Service honorees. To build a strong organization, as Dr. Gamble was fond of saying, you hire good people and then you keep them. As you will see, we have done a stellar job of that. Our second group of recipients are receiving the Spirit of Eastern Awards. These awards, the highest award we give at ENMU, recognize the professionalism and good work of six of our employees. Faculty, of course, are recognized at another time with the Presidential Awards in Teaching, Research, Service, and Advising. We begin this afternoon with the Years of Service Awards, announcing these recipients as the Chief Financial Officer of the ENMU System, Mr. Scott Smart. Thank you, Patrice. Thank you and hello to everyone. Before announcing these awards, I'd like to recognize the Senate Presidents and Vice Presidents of the three support groups, Faculty, Support, and Professional Senates, Dr. Stephanie Beinlich, Faculty Senate President, and Dr. David Sweeten, Vice President. Ms. Laura Smart, Support Senate President, and Mr. Russell Johnson, Vice President. And for the Professional Senate, the President is Mr. Ellen Crawford and Mr. Brent Small, Vice President. We thank these officers for their leadership this past year and for representing their constituencies with competence and care. I also wish to, wish to recognize an employee who passed away in March of this year. We recognized him for 35 years of service at this time last year, Mr. Ron Obenhaus. Now to announce the years of service recognitions. As a reminder, awards are announced in five-year increments. Okay, the five-year awardees for the support staff, Elizabeth Acosta, Mac McCarty, and David Madrid. For professional staff, Adriana Guzman, Debbie Lang, Jacqueline Campbell, Kelly Roberts, William Anderson, Desiree Cooper, Arnolfo Marquez, Melissa Chacon, Aaron Easley, Philip Duran, William Lampkins, and John Hauser. The faculty in the five-year group are Tylene Caffrey, Melissa Harden, Rachel Ling Now, Micah Donald, Gregory Gallagher, Daryl Rowe, David Sweeten, Young Mean Yoon, Michael Reza, Wei Chong Tian, and Lynette Roller. For tenure in the support group, we have Linda Holmes, for professional staff in a tenure category, we have Mickey Stoll and Mickey Morgan. And for 10 years for faculty, we have Paterpong Barushnikal. For 15 years in this support group, Suzanne West, Laura Smart, Rosa Perez, Goldie Russell, Wendy Turner, Turner and Amanda Delgado. For the professional group, Gary Carter. And 15 years for faculty, Brian Pascoe, Christy Jarman, Sarah Wall, Rebecca Davis, and Byron Mitchell. In the 20 year category for support, Charles Reeder and Dusty Cathy. Professional staff, Kelly Mitchell. And for faculty, Mark Dahl, Darren Pollock, and Young Koo Chu. For 25 years, the faculty group, we have Leslie Gill, for 30 years the professional, in the professional group, we have Bobby Victor. For 35 years in the faculty category, Greg Sen. And in 40 years, the Atwell group, Dr. Patrice Caldwell. Dr. Patrice Caldwell, first woman president and chancellor of Eastern New Mexico University, came to Portales in 1980. Even though she was a third generation Californian, she quickly became an adopted New Mexican. Dr. Caldwell was raised with her twin sister, Ellen, in Los Angeles, the daughter of obstetrician gynecologist William Caldwell and Golden Age Hollywood actress Joan Leslie. The sisters attended the University of Southern California. 
earning degrees in English literature. The twins then crossed town to attend UCLA, where Patrice earned a Ph.D. in Victorian literature and Ellen received hers in Renaissance literature. Having taught for four years at UCLA as graduate assistants, the sisters easily landed teaching jobs and Ellen headed off to Nashville, Tennessee, while Patrice went off to Portales, New Mexico. Where the heck is Portales, New Mexico? And luckily for Eastern, she is still there. At Eastern New Mexico University, Dr. Caldwell taught freshman composition, grammar, history of the English language, women's literature, and Victorian poetry and prose while directing the freshman composition program. After four years, she was selected as chair of the English department, and four years after that, she was named interim dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. After a national search was conducted for a new dean, it was decided that no one could fill the position as well as the acting dean, Dr. Patrice Caldwell. She held that post for nine years, contributing to the startup of programs in nursing and social work. She also happily team-taught science fiction and creative writing classes with science fiction author, educator, ENMU alum, and emeritus professor, Dr. Jack Williamson. Here is Dr. Caldwell in 2005 being interviewed for a KENW-TV documentary about the world-famous Jack Williamson. Well, Jack Williamson's contribution to science fiction is going to be phenomenal no matter what scale we use. He's contributed significant publications in eight distinct decades. He has represented the golden age of pulp science fiction all the way up to contemporary publishing just this year. It's not a career that many writers have the stamina or the innovation or the patience and flexibility to maintain. And for that alone, I think Jack Williamson will be remembered for that extremely long and successful career in science fiction. From a literary standpoint, I see three dimensions of Jack Williamson that I consider would mark him as a unique uh, literary figure, not simply in the field of science fiction. The first is that all of his work reveals the discipline of plot. His novels are meticulously plotted. The chapters close with windows they open with hooks. He has an instinct for plot that is phenomenal. And it's in his early work when he was working closely with greats in the field like John W. Campbell. And it is just as evident today when he works with students in a classroom. The second profound discipline that his writing reveals is the discipline of science. If we think about how science has changed in 60 years or 70 years, and we think about the discipline of staying up with it and reflecting its complex interactions with the human psyche and in human society, that's a phenomenal accomplishment. And that discipline of science, of being responsive to it and the way it affects our lives, that is something that Jack Williamson has contributed, not just to science fiction, but to literature. And finally, there's the I don't know if it is a discipline, but the discipline of imagination. Imagination is a, is a difficult mistress. Uh, and for Jack Williamson, it has been a discipline that has separated him from society in the ways that writing always does. It has linked him to writers as solitary and as committed as he, but in connections that often do not sustain us the way other human connections do. And he has given himself to the discipline of the imagination. He has thought about fiction every day of his life that he's been writing. He continues to think about it and to write every single day. That commitment to the writing process and to sharing that with readers, uh, that is a phenomenal accomplishment over the period of time that he continues to write. And I think those three things are what set Jack off for me as a unique literary figure, not just a writer of science fiction. 
But if there were another aspect in his own field that sets him apart, it is his flexibility to move from fantasy to science fiction, from um, genetic engineering to Mars colonization, to his most recent novel, Demon Moon, which talks about the interaction of religion uh, in society with scientific explanations for uh, mythic phenomena. These are the kinds of issues that, that transcend any one genre and address the human condition in profound and important ways. And that's why I think, unlike many other writers, Jack Williamson transcends the limitations and parameters of science fiction and his work will stand uh, that test, I think, through time. In 1997, Patrice was invited to move to grant management when ENMU secured the Pew Leadership Award in undergraduate education. She directed that grant for two years, overseeing the startup of the freshman seminar program. She began studying federal grant writing and drafted her first Title V grant in 2000. By then, she'd moved to the position of Executive Director of Planning and Analysis, overseeing institutional research, assessment, and grant management. Eighteen years and three presidents later, she was promoted to Vice President the additional responsibilities of government relations and chief of staff were added to her many other duties. In March 2020, when a vacancy occurred in the university president's position, the Board of Regents appointed Dr. Caldwell as interim president. The interim title only lasted until September of that year, when Dr. Caldwell became the first woman president of Eastern New Mexico University. With her sunny and optimistic personality, her training and experience, no one doubts that Dr. Caldwell is the perfect person to lead Eastern New Mexico University from a venerable and most honorable past into an even more exciting future. We thank all of you for your many years of service and would ask that you go to the HR office to pick up your pins and certificates that recognize your years of service. I will now turn over the podium to Dr. Caldwell for the announcement of the 2021 Spirit of Eastern Awards. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. In 1995, the Board of Regents approved the President's Spirit of Eastern Award program. The purpose of the program is to improve mission focus and to recognize quality performance and exceptional professionalism. Nominees are ranked using the following criteria. Support of ENMU's teaching and learning mission. Promotion of campus community spirit. Possession of a strong work ethic. Demonstrated care for the institution. Active commitment to student life and a demonstrated track record in his or her position. The selection committee is made up of the previous year's award recipients. Since we could not recognize them as we wished to last year, I would like to recognize them now for their extraordinary contributions to ENMU and to all of us. In the support category, the 2020 Spirit of Eastern Award recipients. Anchoring the kingdom of academic affairs with her sunny smile and care for others, Melissa Bros. Making friends for Eastern every day in the Foundation office, Brenda Wiggins Gonzalez, and our very special angel in HR and much missed, Janine Elder. Our professional recipients for the 2020 Spirit of Eastern Award. Relentless energy, expertise, and love of Eastern, Jennifer Poyer. His name means integrity and competence, Benito Gonzalez a wealth of knowledge and a generous heart, Steve Collins. Thank you, past winners, and still winners to all of us. It is now with special pride and in no particular order that I announce this year's recipients of the Spirit of Eastern Awards. Our awardees are receiving a check for $500, the Spirit of Eastern pin, and a plaque. Since 2001, this employee's mission has been to support students in all of their endeavors. She continually demonstrates patience, responsiveness, and concern for students and professionals alike. She sets a great example of hard work 
and is a role model for her student employees. She tried to retire once, but her love for the institution and its students brought her back to a new setting, new responsibilities, and a whole new era at NMU's GSSC. And she's still focused on student success. Congratulations, Dolores Jones. As payroll accountant for the past five years, this employee not only works hard to get everyone paid on time, but is quick to volunteer on projects thrown her way. She has partnered with ITS to explain HR and payroll processes, sometimes working well into the evening. Her attention to detail is unmatched and she is continuously evaluating procedures to improve their efficiency and effectiveness to better serve employees and students. She embodies the spirit of Eastern, our second recipient, Kelly Roberts. This employee has reached the five-year mark and has not skipped a beat on high performance and hard work. Not only is he the first in line to volunteer and more than willing to help his coworkers to get a job done, he has a positive attitude and never complains. He's pursuing his degree while working nights and shows that he deeply cares for the well-being of the university, its staff, and its students. He exudes the spirit of Eastern in every way possible. David Madrid. This employee has everything you're looking for in the Spirit of Eastern recipient. As the man behind NMU technology scene, his work is crucial to the whole university. He puts in long hours to keep all the technologies up and running so that students, faculty, and staff can have seamless experiences for better learning and efficient work. It's not uncommon to drive by the UCC building on a holiday break weekend or evening and see his vehicle in the parking lot. His dedication and tireless work this past year implementing extra online options while making sure our university's network is not compromised is proof of his outstanding character, commitment, and passion for his work. Our fourth Spirit of Eastern awardee, Justin Lyles. Our fifth awardee has been the administrative assistant for the agriculture, food science, and kinesiology department for over 10 years. And though the department name has changed, she remains a steady and welcome presence, an extremely hard worker who honestly cares about the well-being of the university, department, students, and faculty. She had the strength to hold the department together last year with the passing of their department chair, Dr. Brose. Her extraordinary kindness to faculty and students, her gift for finding ways to improve students' experiences, her constant efforts to do things correctly and improve productivity in her job. These are just a few things that make her our ideal candidate for the Spirit of Eastern. Linda Holmes. This employee excels in her demanding position as evidenced by ever-growing numbers of students benefiting from her assistance and her positive relationships with faculty members. She serves the university and its students with a positive, can-do attitude. As coordinator of accessibility resources and testing, she is committed to doing a superlative job every day and all the time. She's always advocating for the needs and rights of students and finds ways in difficult situations to maintain positive relationships with everyone. Generous with her time, she serves on numerous committees and supports students and their events with her attendance as often as she can. There is no one more deserving of the Spirit of Eastern Award than our sixth recipient, V. Lucas. Congratulations, V, Linda, Justin, David, Kelly, and Dolores. A spectacular group of employees. What a pleasure to honor them. Congratulations to all the years of service honorees. Never think that the work you do goes unnoticed. We are just saving up the kudos for the right moment. Finally, thank you all for coming today to honor some of our best. That you are here means that you are one of our best as well. Please help me to congratulate our honorees today when you see them and give, and give yourself a virtual round of applause because no one at Eastern works in a vacuum. They share their success with you. Thanks, and have a great evening.